Hey there everyone, Spazzy Dragon here, aka Syndromes, and welcome to Discovery Freelancer Let's Play 2015. So, as you might have guessed, this is going to be a spiritual follow-up to the Let's Play that I started to do back in 2013 or 2014 something, and uh, never got through. Mainly because the episodes were too big and uh, there wasn't really much uh, time for me to do these things. But hopefully now, uh, this is going to be a little bit better. I'm going to keep these episodes at about 20 minutes uh, long. I have my um, stopwatch right here next, next to me, so I don't forget. And... Um, so yeah, that is exactly what, it, what we're going to do. We're going to play some Discovery Mod. As we always do. Um, for the purpose for, of this uh, video, I'm going to start all over. Completely over. And uh, just see how far we can get in. And um, first thing we're going to do, we're going to create a character. Now, uh, again, Discovery Freelancer is a roleplay server. So you sort of need to create your character with roleplay in mind. You shouldn't use any stupid uh, naming patterns. So what we're gonna do is either name our character uh, as, a, uh, as a regular name and surname or we're gonna do with a sort of call sign. So I'm gonna do right that. Uh, I'm going to name this thing, say Voss. Let's go with that. This is gonna be our first character. So, the thing about Discovery Mod is that it's currently the only active multiplayer um, uh, multiplayer centric mod, so to speak. And uh, the focus is around roleplay, obviously. If you don't know what roleplay is, hopefully I'm going to show you during the, these Let's Plays. As you can see, we, all, uh, we actually don't start with a store flyer as you would in uh, regular freelancer servers. Uh, you actually start off with a... Now what the hell was this thing called again? The Stargazer. There you go. And as you can see, it already has Class 7s and Class 8 guns. Uh, the reason for this is actually pretty simple. Uh, since we added so many new ships and new, many, uh, new um, you know, stuff for these ships, a lot of the old tech, uh, you know, class ones, uh, class well, pretty much anything, any old gun from class one to class seven became so very obsolete that we simply decided to, you know, remove them. So you pretty much always have the top tier ship. Uh, there is no ships that have some sort of limited mountain, you know, limited stuff on it. So what can we do? We're, we start off with 25,000 credits, which obviously is not a lot. This, But this is gonna be enough for us to actually start off and uh, for this we are going to use a restart command. Now the, what the restart usually does show restarts is that it allows you to create new characters much easier. So, for example, if you wanted to make a um, Gusari character or, say, Rainland character, you would use these restarts to quickly appear in those systems close to the cell point of your ships and IDs and whatever. So, we are going to use this one. It's called the Restart Beginner. And uh, the reason for which I'm going to show you in a moment. Restart Beginner. Uh, we should be disconnected from the server in a moment. It's going to apply the changes to our character. And uh, once we log back in, you'll see that we have um, gained a new ship. There you go. There you go. So this is the Sunburst. This is a, a freighter. Now, the reason why we made this um, restart, so to speak, is uh, because it updates the map. We actually start off with a blank map. Stabilities related to POBs. Uh, POB is a player-owned base. Okay, so, what do we have? Here we have another new player. Okay, let's go 
put these things to use. I, I just noticed that since I reinstalled Disco and Freelancer, a lot of my controls aren't set up properly. So, I think we're gonna do that right now, actually. I know this is gonna take uh, quite a bit of a chunk out of the video, but... Oh well. Let's quickly dock somewhere, though. Controls! Um, engine kill. This is, uh, alternative is going to be N for me. Reverse thrust, uh, the alternative is going to be I for me. Afterburn, the alternative is going to be U. Strafe left, up and down. Uh, you need to bind these things, by the way. Up and down is very important. Turn left is gonna be K, alright, pitch up is gonna be here, pitch down is gonna be there, roll left, one, two, fire weapons, forward, launch missile, mines, torpedo, cruise disruptor, countermeasures, turret view, scan cargo, shift F, because shift is good, Uh, free flight is gonna be shift S. You'll see in a moment away. Out of level to zoom. Fire weapon group, fire weapon one, two, three, four, five. We are going to s sort of move this away from this. Uh, this is gonna be six, seven, eight, nine. Zero minus plus. Okay. Very good. User interface. Um Activate Weapons Group One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And uh everything else is pretty much that. Where's Doc? Where's Doc? Um, the alternate is going to be ship D. Okay, let's see if this works. Yes, yes it does. Okay. Okay, so we got the controls down. Let's start making ourselves some money. First things first. Uh, as you, you can already see, we don't, we don't actually start off in New York. We start off in Pennsylvania and what we're gonna do is gonna start mining helium. This is a helium cloud right, beh uh, right behind a planet Erie which is where we where you actually start off. I'm gonna make sure we have our mining arrays. So usually when you when you're talking about mining uh, you need a combination of different things to get the mining bonus. You can mine pretty much with anything uh, with any ship but you will get specific bonuses if you use specific technology on specific um, fields. So, you might actually see that we're using a minor ID right now, so this thing gives us a generic bonus to pretty much everything. I'll mention IDs a little bit later, but right now we sort of need to start mining. <laughs> so we're just gonna need to quickly fill up our cargo hold. Okay. Yeah, this mining bonus is pretty much okay. So here begins the adventure of our character as a simple <laughs> helium miner just like many other characters do. Okay, we're full. And now we're gonna find somewhere to dump this off. I think these, uh, one of these bases actually... Let's check. Uh, one of these bases buys helium for a pretty decent price. You'll also notice that we're actually traveling a lot faster than um, some other ships. Uh, that's because every ship type in Discovery has its own crew speed. Uh, large ships such as capital ships obviously are a lot slower in crew speed. Oh, there it is. 
you'll quickly notice that these sort of bases are all over the place, uh, and they sort of stand out. The reason for this is that these aren't vanilla bases, these are actually player-owned bases. Um, they're constructed and maintained by players. And uh, you can you can make one as well. Let's quickly see if um, this base in particular buys helium. Yes, it does, but not for a lot, sadly. Okay, let's see. So, this thing uh, sells well in Honshu, which is uh, a fairly decent trip away. I, I don't think that it's going to be worth the 500-something cargo we have right now. But once we bump our ship up to a transport, let's say, uh, then we might start making that trip. But right now we just need to find something close by. And actually, Philadelphia Station which is right there on the next lane. Now that thing actually buys um, buys helium for a pretty decent price. We should be able to get a better ship in a few moments. You'll quickly notice that you start off with a couple of items in your cargo hold. Uh, one of this is the Discovery Server Rules. Um, let's just say that these are very simplified controls, uh, sorry, uh, simplified server rules. You really need to go and check out the full ones. The thing about Freelancer and Discovery in particular is the fact that since we are a roleplay mod, there is a couple of things we cannot limit with game mechanics, so players do need to memorize uh, quite an extensive list of server rules. Yes, it might be a little bit annoying at first, but Believe me, it, it only seems complicated at first. There we go. We, we just got ourselves uh, half a million credits. That's actually pretty good. I used to remember when um, this, uh, stuff like this was bought in Pennsylvania for all, only like, what, 300 units, uh, 300 credits per unit, so you'd get about, like, three times <laughs> less than that, maybe uh, like um, 150. So, with this with this speed in mind, I think we are, we should bump up to the next ship in uh, in the course of this video. At least I hope we have what eight minutes left. That's pretty okay. Actually, Pennsylvania is deserted, but uh, as you can see, the server has 112 people online just because it's very late in the evening. Actually, there are two. Pirate Corp tag players in Pennsylvania. I don't really think that they're pirates because their rank is very low, actually. It's like, what, 35 and 26. It's okay. So this is probably going to be our traitor character. Uh, the thing about roleplaying, by the way, uh, is that... Uh, I think the best way to summarize what is roleplay is that think of it as a theater play or something. When you interact with someone, you interact through characters, the, you know, the ships that you're flying. Um, and uh, roleplay pretty much is relative to the amount of immersion you have, so as long as you give it a chance, it might not seem, in, uh, you know, odd. No, one of those hardcore players has died. So yeah, about roleplay. The thing is, for those of you who know what roleplay is, that's gonna be okay. Uh, you should fit right in. For those of you who don't know what is roleplay, uh, I actually suggest a very simple way... Oh, there we go, we're full. Uh, I actually suggest a very simple way how to do this. If you don't uh, feel too comfortable with roleplay, uh, simply pick a character from a movie or a game that already exists. Uh, we have a rogue NPC on scanner, we need to get out of here. Um, because all the NPCs are actually a, a bit more powerful than they were in vanilla. So, uh, yeah, if you have troubles with roleplaying, just pick a character that you know uh, inside out. For example, for, from a movie or from a different video game, a character you know how it will react 
to certain situations and just roleplay that. Uh, that is probably the easiest way to get into roleplay. And uh, once you get that down, once you're comfortable with it, then you can start uh, designing your own characters. Uh, I actually really favor using uh, things like random character generation. Just, you know, so it's interesting. You're, you're given a script, basically. You give yourself a script and just sort of follow it through. So this is going to land us another half a million credits. So we can already start looking into the next ship that we're going to use. I think there was... Actually... Let's think. Stargazer, Sunburst, Sunrider. I wouldn't say those are very good ships. Yeah, let's try and stop. This, this guy's hauling consumer goods. But we are going to get more money than him because mining is very profitable. Actually, mining is a lot more profitable when you do it with a friend. Oh, there you go. We just hit our first million credits. I think that the ship that we want to buy, next, I mean, is uh, a little bit more than that. Actually, I think it, it was sold right here, actually. Let's check. Oh yeah, that's the transport, right here. Um, six, uh, 6.7 million credits, that's, that's not a lot. We should be able to get that sort of money in a moment. I think we can do another haul before we have to sign off. Or maybe to just make these uh, videos 30 minutes long just for the sake. I, I wouldn't say Freelancer is a very pulse-pounding game when it comes to trading and money-making, but uh, for the sakes of the first few episodes I suppose we could simply just have it at 30 minutes in length, what do you think? Actually, yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna, just gonna do that. Okay, um... <laughs> also, the music in the background, uh, called a Spanish Guitar Mix, uh, Volume 3, you can find it right here on YouTube. Pretty relaxing. Probably doesn't fit disco too much, but no well. There you go. Especially not this one. Actually, no. I take that back. This one pretty much sums up what we're doing right now. So, what do we do with this character, I wonder? Uh, when you're playing, obviously, you, you won't have just one character. One character is going to be for mining, one for trading, one for, you know, specific um, uh, PvP. And uh, hopefully I, I will be able to get uh, get to show you some PvP in a moment. Actually, no. No, these rogues are going to fuck off, which is good. Oh, we're actually using the wrong... There we go. Now we're using the right turrets for this. You have to shoot these small rocks and uh it's not like vanilla, where you actually sort of just drop them in space. Uh, here in Disco, to prevent server lag, you actually get them right in your cargo hold as you mine, which is pretty good. Uh, be careful though, if you have someone... There we go, you're full. If you have someone selected, uh, and they're less than fi fi um, 500 meters away, I think, uh, you'll mine for them. So anything that you mine is going to um, pop in into their cargo hold. Okay, well, also this cloud is disorientating as hell, so I'm just going to use white points because why not? I don't think that we want to ram the planet. By the end of this video we should have enough money, at least half, half as much for the next ship. Shouldn't be a problem though. 
Actually, in my opinion, mining is a pretty bit boring deal. If you're doing it alone, you sort of need a few people to do this properly. But that's okay. If we, we if we if we only could get another player doing this, a transport or something, to run these things to the station. Actually, yeah, let's do that. Let's go to New York and find ourselves uh, a player who wants to help us with hauling. That actually sounds pretty good. Let's see. We can usually find these players by their rank. In Pennsylvania, we don't really have a lot of people like that. Okay, let's quickly sell this thing off, though. And then move our butts down to New York, where all the action is. There we go. 1.5 million credits already. That's pretty decent. Don't worry, we'll have a lot of <laughs> a lot of ways to spend that money in a moment. Because not only we have um, you know, ships and such, we also have uh, armor upgrades, weapons, technology such as cloaks, jump drives, etc, etc. I just we're gonna cut in line, because screw you guy. And we're gonna make ourselves uh, make our way to New York. The good thing about the minor is uh, minor ID is that we get a sort of a small bonus to every single ore that exists in Discovery Freelancer. But the only problem is that um, well, you know, not a lot of this stuff actually exists. So as I said, mining is a group project, so we need another player for this, and uh, since there's no actual trade chat in the game, because, you know, the game is all their stuff we can't add as a mod, uh, we're gonna, we, j we just have to go there and uh, find them ourselves. Uh, that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. There's actually quite a few people in New York, and uh, one of them is a DSC, that's a Deep Space Engineering. I didn't mean to do that. Basically what we just need to find is someone who is... What the hell is this? Oh, the trade lane got knocked out by rogue NPCs. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, we have a pretty decent shield, and by decent, it, I mean it sucks. It's a class 4. Not really good. Also, screw these fields. Can't really see anything. Just gonna do these. Okay, let's visit Manhattan first, I suppose. That's that's the central of uh, Liberty. That's the central, um, central planet. Oh, wow, I think I just... Oh. Never mind, everything's okay. I almost ran myself into Fort Bush. Uh, pff, West Point, I mean. But that's okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, well, the DC is still there, which is a good thing, so we can actually ask this guy. We can get something done. Uh, oh, there we have, we have um, a couple of players here. Greetings there. Have you seen any transports around? I like to do some mining for them. Well, if I was stuck in Minnesota, my ship's engines did not work. Those Universal engineers could not repair it fast enough. Well, well, sir, <laughs> you should have been in Minnesota. Nope, we did not. Okay, so the guy is in here. So let's let's go around Liberty. Uh, let's go around New York and see where that guy is. Let's quickly. Check. What, what the hell was that? That was another player. 
Now the problem is that the scanner that we're using right now is pretty shit. As you can see, the, the range, the detection range on this thing is only 800. Oh, there he is! Greetings DC, you got a moment? Well, of course you have a moment to overshot the trade lane. I am looking for a transport to so I can get some proper mining done. Doing it alone isn't really profitable. So this guy has a huge ship, so you can see he has actually 4,000 cargo space if you compare it to mine. What's your budget? Uh, I mine helium pretty well. Uh, what was the name of that station? Let's quickly check. Let's go back to the maps of Pennsylvania. We need to tell them where we want to sell this thing. I'll have enough mined up for you if you sell it off on Philadelphia Station. It buys helium for 1000 per unit, decent price for the trip. Let's see if he, if he actually... The thing is, if we can get this thing, if we get, uh, if we can get this player to actually go to Pennsylvania, then uh, we won't have to fly around with like 600 cargo space every time we are full. Or maybe he can actually uh, take this thing to Kasari, but the trip is pretty long, and I don't really want to wait for him that that much. Well, he got some saved up. There's a Hagamon, a good pick, a little clumsy and noisy. I know, but I'm an. Don't really have a wallet that big just yet. So I'm looking for someone to mine for. There you go have some roleplay done. Hopefully this guy will accept our little offer. Now the best bet if you're a new player, um, find a guy like this and offer them mining because their ship is large enough so the trip to Kasari where this thing actually sells for quite a bit is pretty much worth it. But you know there's there's always the chance that he doesn't have the time for this, so um, let's hope for the best. By the time you get back to the field, I should have enough to fill you already. So actually, let's see. Um, he has four... Uh, how much does he have? What armor does he have? He has a pretty decent armor, 190, and um, so basically he has a uh, 100, uh, yeah, four, uh, sorry, 4,100 units of cargo, and um, 
Yeah, he, he should get like four million out of it. How about sell platinum? I don't know if this ship can mine platinum, but I can go check. Where is the mining spot? Okay, looks like uh, helium is out of the question. We're gonna go try to mine some, you know, up in Alberta. My ship is too small for long trips. I am... So I am working as the miner. I don't. I. I don't think. Uh, I think he actually misunderstood. I think he misunderstood. He actually thinks that I want him to mine or something. Heinz, mm. Airy, to. To the station three minutes away from it. Why should I do a twenty minute trip for four, four million then? Yeah, this this guy is completely clueless, sadly. I don't think he knows how it works. For him, these uh, trips are going to make more sense than for me. So, we're just gonna have to do something else. So, helium is a good choice, but I don't think that we are gonna get a proper amount from it. So... I suppose we're just gonna cut, cut the episode right here, and next time we're gonna go check out what's going on in Colorado. So yeah. Was fun. See you back in uh, the next episode.